Lesson 10.3G, Simplifying to Determine Equivalence. Expressions can be equivalent for all values or only when specific values are used. To know if expressions are equivalent for all values of a variable, we simplify the expressions to a form that can be compared. We can simplify the expressions first, then compare. Remember, a fraction bar tells us to divide. And remember, like terms will have the same variable or variables with the same exponent or exponents. So here are some like terms. We have a 2n plus 3n plus n. We have the same variable and they don't have an exponent. These are like terms, all three of these. We have a 5 plus an 8. Those are like terms. And we have a 4x raised to the second power plus an x raised to the second power. Same variable, same exponent. These are not like terms. We have a 2n raised to a third power, then we have a 3n raised to a second power, and then an n with no exponent. We have one, two, three terms, and neither of these three terms are like. Here we have 5x plus 8. These are not like terms because this has a variable x and this has no variable. Here we have 4x raised to the second power and an x. It may be the same variable, but they don't have the same exponent. So those are not like terms. It's telling us to determine if the expressions are equivalent. Here we have a real long expression. We have 5x plus 5 times 7x plus 8y plus 8y, and we're going to compare it to 5x plus 6y times 8. For this one, we can use the distributive property first on this middle term here, and we do 5 times 7x, which gives us 35x, and 5 times 8y, which gives us 40y. Now we have 5x plus 35x plus 40y plus 8y. We combine the like terms, 5x plus 35x is 40x, and 40y plus 8y is 48y. For this one, we can distribute the 8 into the parentheses. We can write it as 8 times 6y plus 8 times 5x, or we can do the 5x first, so that we'll have it in the same order as this one. We've got 8 times 5x is 40x, and 8 times 6y is 48y. And we can see, yes, they are equivalent. We didn't need to know the value for x and y. We just simplified them and ended up with two same expressions. Here we have a very long expression, and then we have an expression with distributive property. We can start combining the like terms in this one. We have a 4a raised to the third power, and we have a minus a raised to the third power. Remember, the sign goes with the term. So there's an invisible 1 in front of that a, isn't there? When the variable is alone, there's an invisible 1. We learned that. That means we have 4a raised to the third power minus 1a raised to the third power. That gives us 3a raised to the third power. We have our plus 9. Then we have a plus 3b plus 7b. We're going to put these two like terms together to get a plus 10b. Now, using the commutative property, we can exchange the places here because we can add in any order. And we have 3a raised to the third power plus 10b plus 9. For this one, we can distribute the 3. We get 3 times 3 a raised to the third power, that's going to give us 9a raised to the third power. We have 3 times 5b, that's going to give us a 15b plus the 9. We can see, no, they're not equivalent. Here we have an expression with a fraction bar. Remember, that means division. We have 5x plus x for our numerator over 2. So that's 5x plus x divided by 2 minus 3. And we have 2x plus x minus 3 when x is equal to 4. First thing we do is substitute 4 for x and add the numerator. That means we have 5 times 4 plus 4. 
that's 20 plus 4, that's a 24, and that's over the 2. So we're going to do 24 divided by 2, which gives us a 12. We're going to subtract the 3, and we get a 9. For this one, we substitute 4 for x. We have 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 4. That's going to give us a 12. We subtract the 3, and that's 9. So yes, they're equivalent when x is equal to 4. So just remember, once you substitute the value for the variable, we have a fraction bar here. That means we're going to divide. Here we have another fraction bar, so that means we have more division. We have 3 times n plus 10 divided by 6 and n divided by 6 plus 7 when n is equal to 6. We substitute 6 for n. That means we have 3 times 6 plus 10. Well, 6 plus 10 is 16, and 3 times 16 is 48. You can even do a little multiplication on the side here on scratch paper if you need to. 48 divided by 6, well, 6 times 8 is 48, so that's an 8. Here, we substitute 6 for n, and we get 6 divided by 6 plus 7. Well, fractions with the same numerator and denominator are equal to 1. That means we have 1 plus 7. That's an 8. So yes, they're equivalent when n is equal to 6. Looking ahead to module 11, this is simplifying when there's a fraction bar. Here we have 10n divided by 5. We divide 10 divided by 5. That's equal to 2. And the variable n follows along to be multiplied by the quotient. We have 2n. Here we have b plus b over 2. That's 2b divided by 2. We have a 2 over a 2. Well, that's 1. 2 over a 2 is equal to 1, same numerator and denominator. The variable follows, and we don't write the 1. We have 1 times b. We just write b. There's that invisible 1 there for 1 times b. Here we have 4x divided by 2x. Well, that just equals 2. We have 4 divided by 2. That's equal to 2. And we have an x divided by x. It doesn't matter what x's value is. It's going to be the same number regardless of what it is. If x is 5, then we have 5 over 5. If it's 2, it's a 2 over a 2. So x over x is going to be equal to 1 because we have the same numerator and denominator. That means we have 4 divided by 2, which is 2, times a 1. 2 times 1 is 2. That's why it's equal to 2. We did 4 divided by 2 and got a 2, and this x over this x made a 1. And we'll learn more about this in video 11.3b, using division to solve equations. We're finished with module 10. We're going to be moving on to module 11. And our next lesson is determining whether values are solutions. There was an awful lot of information in these 10.3 lessons. I hope you were able to understand them. I hope you have a wonderful day. And please join me for next time. Bye.